In this video, we'll continue editing by starting to bring in some images into Photoshop. So it launched it on the MacBook screen. Let's pull it over to the Cintiq here. And the first thing I want to do is run it through uh, actions. So these actions are ones that um, created, I think I created them in the Golden Hour Shoot with Elise um, tutorial. If you want to see that, we restarted that. Basically, it's going to run through, um, create a base set of uh, layers so everything's consistent. And it's also going to run it through Photo AI and Luminar Neo to get some base AI editing. So I have it set really low on that. And let's just run it through this. It's not going to save and close, which is something we added in some... Yeah. Uh, okay, this is adding a sky. Let's... Okay, we might need to adjust this. But let's run it through and see what... what this looks like when we first run it. So you can always revert back <laughs> to the image if we need. So oh, it popped open on the other screen here. So that's uh, AI doing, uh, photo AI doing some initial processing. see you so now neo's opening luminar i'm checking to see if it'll open on what screen it'll open on so i remember um I mentioned the sky in the action i remember from the golden hour shoot yeah so we did a lot of sky replacement in there so we adjusted the action for that um but it's yeah it's gonna pop up over here um, and this is where we came in and picked the sky. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to hit apply because we're not going to need sky replacement. So I already know we're going to adjust this. Yeah. So adjust the curve. So this is pretty specific to that. Um, to that project. So let's revert our image back to, back to this. And let's give this a new name. So this will be actually, I think, stop calling the same thing. I will call this our, the action for this project. So inside this, if we run through, let's actually, you know what? Let's just create a new one. We'll just do it from scratch and rather than fixing that and there we go. Okay. So we'll make this green. It's the one that we're currently working on. Okay. So with this recording, let's, I'm going to hold down, um, option, double click in order to set that. So this is, I always like to keep the original photo and then I'm going to hit command J to duplicate. This is starting with photo AI. So let's come in to best labs, photo AI, let's run that. So with this, what I like to do is to do a little bit of sharpening. So you can see it's a little bit out of focus there. So let's make this a little bit bigger just to see. I guess it won't let me uh, double click in order to, to make it larger. All right, so you can see it's, it's sharpening there. It is adding a little bit of, a little bit too much to that. So let's bring it down a little bit. Might be a little strong. Remember, we can always add more to it also. So that's still initializing, adjusting, sharpening, preview updated. Okay. So before, after. Still adding a little bit of texture there. So 
let's get rid of any denoise and bring it down quite a bit. There we go. That's a little better. So it's it's not as strong. Might be able to get away with something like 25, but it's not introducing those textures either. Okay, so we're going to stick with 25 and let that process. Again, that's, that's going to be a base, so we can't always add it as we need to. But of course, you know, for a shot like this, it's this is a full body shot, so it's not going to be as close. Um, but we also have some shots that are closer up, so I don't want to do too much. So with that, got it. Let's duplicate. You know, actually, I'm going to adjust this. Let's stop this. Let's get rid of this layer. I don't want... We don't even really need to du duplicate this. We're just going to leave it all in... Oops. <laughs> Deleting to, to the layers there. Okay. So once we run that, we have this. Let's just... So this is just going to be our edited, and then we're just going to lay it on top. For a lot of projects, I like to keep the the history so I can go back. So I could go back if I wanted to, but um, just to keep it a little minimal. We'll, let's make this larger here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so let's find trying to find I can't see the uh, scroll there there we go interface is too dark to be able to see the scroll with I've got with the, the lights that I have in here I'm not going to make any can't see your eyes or anything like that so but I'm just going to do super subtle and then we can always adjust if we need to later on. So these are the edits that we've made. Again, super subtle. I'm going to adjust the skin a little bit. Try 30. So just adds in a, a subtle smoothing to the skin. So we'll apply that. And then progress is over there. Okay, so that so we have that. And I think that should be it. We don't really I'm not gonna add in sky or anything like that, but okay. So we have this. Oh, you know what though? I'm gonna do one more thing. Let me record. I'm gonna create a new layer. So add a heel layer in case I wanna, there are some things. So what I do on, on this layer, I'll come in, you know, with my heel tool, maybe make sure current and below, you know, Oops. Healing brush. There we go. So that's that's kind of what I use that for. Just an extra layer. There's not a lot in this particular image. Um actually. It looks like there is some.
what happens when you uh, adjust outfits, <laughs> change outfits a lot. Sometimes you get other outfits that just leave impressions on in this on the skin. Oops. So you can see before and after. That's obviously just some a little bit of an impression. So it looks like we might need to do some of that sort of cleanup on these images. That's fine. Okay. All right. So with this, we'll go ahead and save that and then move on to the next one. So with this, now we can just come in and apply this. You know, let's try to, at, for the next, next one. This is our, this is already started running through here, but there we go. All right. So that's done. And I think, yeah, so you can see again, we've got some just lines here to fix. No big deal. This one actually looks like it might be a little soft and focused too, so. We might not even end up using this one anyway, but that's fine. Process this. I was thinking um, I might run a batch process on these to get that and in this initial action run. So some of this, I don't really see that too much in here, the um, outfit impressions, but knowing that they were there, let me fix that. And again, for a lot of these are full body, so they're not gonna be seen there. Let's come in and do Image processor or batch, open files. And let's let it run through all of these. Hmm, okay, interesting. It won't let me set the background on that. That's fun. Interesting. Let's, is that still saving? No. All right. Maybe the image processor will help, will, will work instead of batch. All right. So I don't want to save it. No, that's going to try to save it automatically. Well, that might not be better idea we could do that let's try open images same location because then we would have all the tiff files just like if we did the droplet like i've done before so let's let's see if this will just let it run through all those and then we can come back and start to clean that up if that works then that'll be the process that i'll use throughout this um normally what i would do if you watch my other tutorials normally what i would do is create a droplet and then pull all of those in there. Um, there's two issues with that. One, I've never really had luck with droplets on Mac as opposed to Windows. It just seems to work a lot better on Windows, um, creating them from Photoshop. 
And, but really the bigger issue, cause I'm sure we can work through that part of it, but really the bigger issue is the workflow with Lightroom is it opens the raw files. Whereas my normal workflow, normally, historically I use Capture One more than I use Lightroom. Um, obviously I'm using Lightroom for this project instead, but so what I would do then is when you open it from Capture One, it doesn't open the raw files like we have here. What it does is it actually generates the TIFF files at that point. So I can look in the folder um, while that processes, I can pull this over here. So um, in the actual folder, you can see the TIFF files that are being generated, but they're only being generated in Photoshop after the, um, after the images are saved. So once we make these edits and we save them because the raw format file file format can't support layers, Photoshop saves them as TIFF files. In the Capture One workflow, it's a little bit different because it will create the TIFF files initially. And quite honestly, that makes it easier. So I can say, okay, these are the TIFF files. Those are the PIX ones that we've, that we've filtered, we've created. And then I can just drag those into the droplet to make them run um, that droplet. Again, if you watch some of my other tutorials where I am using Capture One and that workflow, you can see how that workflow uh, works. <laughs> but uh, so it won't quite work as easily with Lightroom um, just because of the nature of, of how it opens the files in RAW. So I'd have to come in and try to figure out all the numbers for all of these, which are the ones that are flagged. I mean, I could take them and I could export the originals into a new folder or there's workarounds and things like that. But all of that takes extra time. It just takes away the time from, from doing it um, automatically. And I try to get things done as fast as possible. So, all right, so this is running here. So it looks like it's running through and then if it'll let me, it's still processing. Oh, it's, so what it's doing, um, it's actually putting them in this folder here. That's fine. We'll just move them out. So it, it creates it in a TIFF fo folder. Um, but we'll just move them back into here. So that's a difference. Um, the dash edit is closing the file inside of Photoshop, the raw file, then it automatically adds that dash edit. Whereas here it's just creating the TIFF file. So just a slight different change. Of course, we can change the file names if we want to. I'm probably not gonna bother with that. But let's go ahead, I'll go ahead and stop this video here while this processes, and then uh, we'll come back when it's done.